Zhang Yi traveled to 1947, but it was the beginning of hell. He became a soon-to-be-assigned agent, and his first task was how to escape from this place that could kill him at any moment. Escaping to Hong Kong Island, determined to become a salted fish, coincidentally built a factory and formed a fleet in the process of doing business, I met a variety of people and realized that the world I am in is composed of movies and TV shows. I met Lei Luo and Chen Jichao at the police academy, and in my hometown of Beiping, I discovered that my neighbor was a character from the Zhengyangmen Little Women. I bought a new courtyard house, but many years later, I found out that my neighbor was someone who was passionate about the courtyard house Feilun Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. Chapter 1 Agents. You are listening at novelfull.audio. In March 1947, in the ward on the third floor of Renai Hospital in Hangzhou City, Zhang Yi slowly opened his eyes and looked at this unfamiliar environment. The simple wooden beds and rooms decorated in the style of the last century, although it can be seen that this is a hospital, it is definitely not the era he is familiar with. Because in the era he was familiar with, the most ordinary clinics were better than here. While Zhang Yi was still observing the room environment, the door was opened and a middle-aged doctor wearing glasses and a nurse walked in. The doctor saw Zhang Yi looking at them and said to Zhang Yi, Are there any other discomfort in your body when you wake up? Zhang Yi casually said, I have a slight pain in my head, not elsewhere. The doctor examined Zhang Yi's head and found no wounds, saying, Your headache is caused by prolonged hypoxia in the brain, resulting in brain damage that requires rest and recuperation. The doctor is still examining Zhang Yi, occasionally asking him to move his hands or lift his legs. Seeing that Zhang Yi can do it, he said to the nurse, Take him for a walk in the garden in the next two days, and we can inform them of the school he can be discharged from the hospital. The nurse replied cleanly. Got it, Dr. Lee. The doctor advised Zhang Yi on some precautions and walked out of the room with the nurse. Zhang Yi only now has time to consider how he came here, and two memories are constantly flashing in his mind. If Zhang Yi does not sort out these two memories, he may eventually become schizophrenic and be treated as mentally ill. One is a familiar memory of Zhang Yi, from his birth in 1990 to drowning in death in 2021. The 31-year memory is incredibly clear, even the information he casually browsed in the past can still be vividly remembered. The other end of the memory is from 1929 to the present, where I lived in Beiping before the age of 10 and in Xincheng after the age of 10. The warm memories of being with family, the experiences of studying at school, and the scenes of escaping from war. Zhang Yi finally sorted out his memory and knew his situation after crossing the country. He is still called Zhang Yi, 18 years old this year, and has a mother and a nine-year-old sister at home. His father was killed by the Japanese on the eve of the victory in the anti-Japanese war. Zhang Yi and his classmates came to Hangzhou Police Officer School to study in 1945. Hengqing Police Officer School is a school that trains modern police officers, but in 1935, after Mr. Dai became the principal, it became a training base for military intelligence agents. After the fall, it was taken over by the Japanese. After the victory of the anti-Japanese war, it was taken over again by the military intelligence. Students with outstanding academic performance were selected to join the military intelligence and trained as special agents. Zhang Yi was selected for special agent training due to his excellent performance, but drowned in the final assessment. Zhang Yi knows the future development trend and knows that if he works for the Military Statistics Bureau, he will be liquidated in the future. I have been thinking about how to escape from the Military Intelligence Bureau alive. The Military Intelligence Bureau is an intelligence agency, and all agents are lifelong. If they leave without permission, they will be pursued by assassins. Although the Military Intelligence Bureau will not be able to protect themselves in a few years, Zhang Yi knows that if he leaves without permission now, 
he will not be able to survive for even a week and will die on the streets. I thought of many solutions, but in the end, they were all rejected by Zhang Yi. In the future, I will still find opportunities to defect to the party. Zhang Yi lay in bed thinking, other people who have traveled through time are not royal relatives or nobles, but even if they are decent figures, they are undercover agents. How could they become villains with us, or a villain heading towards the end? At this moment, the door of the room was opened and a young man in a suit walked in. He saw Zhang Yi looking at him and spoke up. You dry duck, competing for first place in swimming, are you sick? The young man who spoke was his friendly Jianwu, who grew up and studied with him since childhood. Their relationship was particularly strong, except that Li Jianwu was from the south and Zhang Yi was from the north. Zhang Yi smiled and said. Why did you come over? Aren't you training today? Are you brainwashed? We graduated yesterday and have all been assigned positions. You can leave school this afternoon. Where have you been assigned? I am far from home and assigned to Jin Men Station. Where have I been assigned? I didn't say anything. I need you to ask the instructor. We won't talk about work anymore. The people at Jin Men Station will leave the school in the afternoon. When will you be discharged from the hospital? The doctor said he can be discharged tomorrow. The two of them chatted for a while, and Li Jianwu went back to school to pack his luggage. Zhang Yi originally wanted to tell him to find an opportunity to leave the military statistics bureau, but he didn't know where to start, so he didn't say anything. He thought he would have the opportunity to do so in the future. After Li Jianwu left, Zhang Yi got out of bed and walked back and forth, doing various movements, gradually restoring the amount of muscle movement. At night, Zhang Yi had a strange dream. He dreamed that he had returned to the place where he drowned and saw a white jade hand bone underwater. In the morning, he still remembered the dream clearly, but Zhang Yi didn't pay much attention. In the morning, the doctor came to the room and conducted various tests for Zhang Yi, telling him that he could be discharged from the hospital. Zhang Yi packed his things and walked out of the hospital on his own. He called a yellow van at the hospital gate and walked towards Hangzhou Police Academy. Arriving at the school gate, Zhang Yi handed his documents to the guard at the entrance. After the guard looked at them, he returned the documents and allowed Zhang Yi to enter the school. Zhang Yi did not return to the dormitory and walked towards the instructor's office. Zhang Yi shouted loudly at the office door. Report the person inside said. Come in, Zhang Yi opened the door and walked in, seeing a colonel officer wiping his gun on his desk, saying. Sir, student Zhang Yi is reporting to you. The middle dot aged officer looked at Zhang Yi and said. Sit down, no one else can relax. Zhang Yi sat down on the sofa, and the middle dot aged officer said again. When can you change your competitive personality? This time you're going to the hospital, will you be going to the underworld next time? I don't know if I'll choose you for the military statistics bureau, right? Zhang Yi quickly replied. Sorry sir, I will make corrections. The middle dot aged officer smiled and shook his head, saying. You have assigned the location to Shinqing Station, but the station master of Jinling Station called and wanted to take you over. You can choose your own location. After speaking, look at Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi respectfully said. Sir, I am not familiar with the situation of the two stations, but I believe in you. Please help me select. Zhang Yi flattered his boss a little bit, and sometimes a kind word can bring unexpected surprises. The middle dot aged officer smiled and said. I suggest you go to Shinqing Station. Jinling is a national capital with many high dot ranking officials and dignitaries, which is not suitable for people like you who have no connections. Shenqing City has a developed economy and is also an intelligence center in Asia, where mixed personnel can easily make achievements. What Zhang Yi wanted in his heart was not to make achievements, but to quickly break away from the abyss of the military statistics bureau. Zhang Yi immediately said. I will follow the arrangements of the superior. 
The middle-aged man took out the dispatch order from the drawer and said. In the future, seek stability in work, don't be impatient or work hard. Now the war has won. Zhang Yi was thinking that what the supervisor said was exactly the opposite of what he said during teaching, which required everyone to not be afraid of sacrifice, sacrifice their lives for righteousness, and make contributions. Now all the secrets of being an official, no mistakes are achievements, are being cultivated as a legitimate lineage. Zhang Yi took the call and replied. Remember the teachings of the chief, the middle-aged officer felt happy when he saw Zhang Yi's sincere attitude and said. You don't need to resign before leaving. Zhang Yi immediately saluted and replied. I'm leaving. Chapter 2 White Jade Hand Bones You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Zhang Yi withdrew from the office and turned to walk towards the dormitory. There was no one in the dormitory, and Zhang Yi saw that the luggage rack was empty and knew that all his roommates should have left school yesterday. Zhang Yi opened his rattan suitcase, put all his clothes and books inside, and checked again to see if he had forgotten anything. Lying in bed to rest, he unconsciously fell asleep and had the same dream as last night. When he woke up, Zhang Yi thought it was a coincidence and didn't care. Zhang Yi got up from bed and saw that it was gradually getting dark outside. He got out of bed, picked up utensils, and walked towards the cafeteria. After having dinner in the cafeteria, Zhang Yi returned to the dormitory and read in bed. Unconsciously, Zhang Yi fell asleep. The next day when he wakes up, he will remember his dream from last night. This is the third time he has dreamed of the same thing, a white jade hand bone that has been broken from his wrist, lying quietly at the bottom of the water, as if calling him. Having dreamed three times in a row, Zhang Yi couldn't ignore it. He decided to go to the place where he drowned before leaving, whether it could be found or just a dream. Zhang Yi put on his clothes and washed up, then went outside the school and took a yellow charter car to head towards the Four Spirits Lake. The Four Spirits Lake is located five kilometers north of their school, and there is a legend about the Four Spirits Protector here, which is called the Four Spirits Lake. The lake has a large area and the deepest point is only 15 meters, making it a stagnant lake. Its magic lies in the fact that there is no water flowing in or out, and the lake water has not deteriorated, which remains an unsolved mystery to this day. Zhang Yi was on vacation when he heard the coachman say, Sir, the Four Spirits Lake has arrived. Zhang Yi got off the car and paid the driver for the car. Zhang Yi walked towards the location of the assessment. Zhang Yi is pondering whether if this is the place where he first traveled, he will return to 2021 after entering the water. Zhang Yi was at the assessment location, but he couldn't find a single boat even if he looked left or right, even a canoe would suffice. Zhang Yi saw no one around took off his clothes, picked up the wooden board under his feet, and swam towards the middle of the lake. Arriving at the drowning spot, Zhang Yi took a deep breath and dived towards the bottom of the lake, searching everywhere for the location of the white jade hand bone in his dream. Suddenly, I saw a white light flashing in the lower left corner. I was about to swim over, but the air in my lungs had run out, so I had to swim to the lake to breathe. Zhang Yi once again sneaked towards the position of Bai Guang, reached out and grabbed the bone of Bai Yu's hand, wanting to swim out of the lake, but unexpectedly pulled himself down. After some exercise, the air in the lungs has been used up, and I am returning to the lake to breathe again. Zhang Yi dived down again. This time, Zhang Yi didn't rush to retrieve the white jade hand bones. Instead, he grabbed the white jade hand bones with both hands and landed on the ground, kicking his legs hard. He rushed towards the lake with the white jade hand bones and rushed out. Zhang Yi quickly placed the white jade hand bones on the wooden board, then pushed the board to swim towards the shore. Zhang Yi put on his clothes and then carefully examined the white jade hand bones on the ground. Holding a scabbard dagger with his hand bone, the dagger was approximately 30 centimeters long. Wearing a ring on the middle finger of the hand bone, the ring is tightly attached to the middle finger. Zhang Yi saw the condition of the ring and hand bone, 
and began to doubt whether the owner of the hand bone was a skull. Otherwise, why there was no gap between the ring and the middle finger. This is not in line with common sense. Zhang Yi drew the dagger out of his hand bone and pulled it out of its sheath. A cold light flashed over the dagger, indicating that it was very sharp. Zhang Yi lightly touched the blade with his left hand, and just as he touched it, his fingers felt pain. He lifted his hand and saw that blood had already flowed out of his hand. Zhang Yi shook his hand to shake off the blood, and a little bit of it fell on the ring, slowly being absorbed by the ring. Zhang Yi walked towards the nearby boulder with a dagger and stabbed it towards it. He saw the dagger easily thrust into the boulder and pulled it out. Zhang Yi Shi burst into laughter from his heart. Sitting next to the boulder, Zhang Yi carefully looked at the dagger. The blade of the dagger had cloud patterns on both sides, and the blade had a curvature of about 45, making it suitable for stabbing. The handle was relatively simple, and the material was not wood, not gold. It was very comfortable to grip and fit tightly with the palm of the hand. Zhang Yi couldn't put it down and occasionally stabbed or shaved on the boulder. After playing for a while, Zhang Yi inserted the dagger into its sheath and placed it beside him. Reaching for the hand bone, as soon as it touched, the ring detached from the hand bone and wrapped around Zhang Yi's middle finger. Zhang Yi quickly shook his hand and shook off the ring. Seeing that I couldn't shake it off, I wanted to take off the ring with my hands, but I couldn't get it off. Zhang Yi sighed and stopped competing with the ring. He began to observe the ring, which was blue in color with white stars in the middle. The ring was tightly attached to his fingers, and Zhang Yi moved and clenched his fists without any discomfort. At this point, all the blood that had dripped on the ring before was absorbed by the ring, and Zhang Yi also had contact with the ring. He knew that the ring was a legendary storage ring, and Zhang Yi's mind also presented scenes from the ring. The space inside the ring was about the size of a football factory, 10 meters high. There are relatively few items in the ring, and there is a very large bookshelf filled with books. Moreover, the books are very exquisite, indicating that the former owner was a cultured person. There is also a desk and a chair under the bookshelf. Strangely, there is no pen or ink on the table, but there is a stack of paper placed on the desk, temporarily called paper. Strangely, this paper looks like metal, but it is not as hard or sharp as metal. Instead, the patterns are fine and regular, more like woven fabric. Next to him were about 3,000 fist-sized gemstones, from which Zhang Yi took out one by one. The white ones had no sensation and had a delicate texture, resembling sheepskin jade. The blue ones were cool, the blue ones were more like jadeite, and the red ones were warm. There was nothing else in the ring, it was empty inside, and Zhang Yi put his hand bone into the ring. I plan to go back to school and stop a yellow chartered car on the road. The coachman is pulling the car in front of me. Zhang Yi takes out a book from his ring and reads it. When he opens it, it feels like a thunderbolt, and he doesn't recognize any of the text inside. It's full of various symbols and graphics, like learning from a mixture of oracle bone script and hieroglyphs. However, it's okay. Although I don't know the characters, I can still read the illustrations in the book. There are many illustrations in the book, which are very three-dimensional and realistic. Zhang Yi looked at the illustrations in the car with great interest. The coachman stopped the car and said to Zhang Yi. Sir, you have arrived. Zhang Yi closed the book and looked up. So fast, the coachman complimented him. You are fascinated by reading, so it feels fast. Zhang Yi didn't pay attention to the coachman's compliments and handed him 20 cents. No need to look. At that time, the coachman only paid a few cents for pulling the car up close, and they only earned about one yuan a day. Zhang Yi's fare was only about one asterisk asterisk. Words of concern from the coachman came from behind. Thank you, be careful under your feet. Returning to school, Zhang Yi did not return to the dormitory, but went to the cafeteria for lunch. After finishing lunch and returning to the dormitory, 
Zhang Yi picked up his suitcase and walked towards the train station. In the afternoon, Zhang Yi is leaving school to report to Shenqing Station. He will take the train in the afternoon and can have dinner at home in the evening. Arriving at the train station, Zhang Yi bought a ticket for the train from Hangzhou to Shenqing. The train departed in half an hour and Zhang Yi went to the waiting hall to wait. He didn't bother wandering around, afraid of missing this bus. If he missed it, he would have to wait tomorrow. In this era, there were only two daily trips from Hangzhou to Shenqing, one at 8 o'clock a.m. and one at 3 o'clock p.m. After getting on the car, Zhang Yi put his luggage on the luggage rack and found a seat to sit down. The train tickets bought now are different from those of later generations. Tickets only have train schedules, no carriages or seats, and passengers can sit freely after getting on the train. During Zhang Yi's observation of the carriage, the train slowly started moving and gradually began to accelerate, reaching a speed of approximately 50 km per hour. Zhang Yi was also helpless about this speed. In later times, it could easily drive up to 80 km per hour, and now trains are even slower than driving. Chapter 3 Going Home You are listening at NovelFull.audio At around 6.30 p.m., the train stopped at Shanghai Station. Zhang Yi walked out of the station carrying his luggage. As soon as he left the station, a carriage driver came to solicit business. Zhang Yi politely declined some carriage drivers and walked out of the station area. Zhang Yi was standing at the intersection admiring the night view of Shenqing when a sound came from behind. Sir, are you using the car? Zhang Yi turned to the coachman and said. Public concession, number 1345 Fuxing East Road, how much is it? The coachman immediately said. Sir, you can give three cents. Zhang Yi said unhappily. Twenty cents, if not, I'll find someone else. Zhang Yi knows the specific price. In his memory, the fare from the station to home was twenty cents, and the coachman treated him like a scapegoat. Sir, please get in the car, the coachman saw that Zhang Yi knew the price and immediately agreed. Arriving at the place, Zhang Yi paid the driver for the car and walked towards the third floor with a nervous heart. Passing by the second floor, he happened to see Aunt Shui opening the door. Zhang Yi greeted with a smile. Good evening, Aunt Shui. Aunt Shui turned around and saw that it was Zhang Yi, but also smiled and said. Xiaoyi, you're back. Your mother must be happy to hear about it. Hurry up and go home. Zhang Yi walked upwards while speaking. I'll go home now, arriving at the doorstep, Zhang Yi raised his hand to knock on the door and then put it down. Due to his lifelong memories, Zhang Yi has feelings for his family, but he is also afraid that his family will discover that he is not the original Zhang Yi. In the end, Zhang Yi knocked on the door and a sound came from inside. Who is it? Come right away. Zhang Yi took a deep breath and said. Mom, I'm Xiaoyi. In my memory, Zhang Yi always called himself Mom and did not change his name to Xin Cheng. Therefore, when he was at school, he was nicknamed Yankee by his classmates. As soon as Zhang Yi finished speaking, there were hurried footsteps coming from inside the room, and then the door opened from inside. Ji Xue looked at Zhang Yi standing at the door and choked up. You dead child, why didn't you say it in advance when you came back? Zhang Yi looked at his mother who was about to cry and said. Mom, won't you let me in? I'm still hungry. Ji Xue smiled and hit Zhang Yi, saying. What nonsense. Come in quickly. Zhang Yi entered the room and didn't see his younger sister Zhang Ran. He asked. Mom, where's Sharan? Ji Xue said as she closed the door. I went out to play, I should be back soon. Zhang Yi placed his luggage in his own room, which was very clean and should have been cleaned by his mother frequently. At this moment, Ji Xue said outside. Make your own bed, I'll stir fry a dish and start the meal. Zhang Yi replied. Okay, mom. Zhang Yi began to make the bed, 
took out the clothes from the suitcase, and put them in the wardrobe. Zhang Yi tidied up the room and came to the kitchen to help. Ji Xue quickly said. You go downstairs to find your sister and ask her to come and have dinner. Zhang Yi exaggeratedly said. Okay, I'll go get her back. As soon as Zhang Yi finished speaking, there was a kick on the door. Ji Xue said helplessly. How many times has Zhang Ran told you not to kick the door, but to knock on it with your hands? The loud voice of my sister came from outside the door. I know, mom, open the door quickly, I'm hungry. Zhang Yi walked to the door and opened it. Seeing his sister sweating profusely, he said. Xiao Ran, where did you go to play? You were sweating profusely. Zhang Ran raised her head, saw Zhang Yi's face clearly, and said happily. Brother, come back. As he spoke, he saved Zhang Yi's leg and climbed up, lifting her up. Although my younger sister is nine years old, she is less than one meter tall, which is far from Zhang Yi's height of 1.8 meters. This is because Zhang Yi's living conditions are relatively good. In a family with poor conditions, the nine-year-old child is much shorter in height than Zhang Ran. Zhang Yi took his sister to the bathroom and washed her hands and face. She didn't cooperate yet, and Zhang Yi was covered in water, giggling non-stop. At this moment, Ji Xue said outside. Wash it and come out to eat. At this moment, Zhang Ran cooperated and Zhang Yi wiped his hands and face before sitting down at the dining table. Ji Xue placed the rice in front of her sister and said. Eat well and don't play around. Ji Xue sat down and said while eating. How many days will you stay at home this time? Zhang Yi said. Mom, I graduated and my workplace is in Xincheng. I'm not leaving. Are you becoming a police officer? Zhang Yi had a puzzled expression on his face, wondering if he should tell his mother that he was working in the military statistics bureau. Although his mother worked in a foreign company and was knowledgeable, he was afraid that his mother would worry, so he decided not to speak. Ji Xue looked at Zhang Yi's expression and knew that it was inconvenient for him to speak, then said. If it's inconvenient for you to say, mom won't ask either. You should pay attention to your own safety. Zhang Yi panicked and said. I will be careful. If there is no war now, there is no danger. Although there is no war, life and death are constantly unfolding on the intelligence battlefield. Zhang Yi and his family had the most delicious meal since their travels, and after finishing the meal, they played with their little sister for a while before returning to their own room to sleep. The next day after breakfast, Zhang Yi arrived at the military statistics Xinqing station and stationed at number 76 DGC Fei Road. This place was the headquarters of the famous secret agency number 76 during Japanese occupation. After the victory of the anti-Japanese war, it was requisitioned by the military statistics and became the military statistics headquarters. Zhang Yi handed over his order to the guard at the door, who verified with the people inside by phone before releasing him. Zhang Yi came to the entrance of the stationmaster's office and shouted loudly. Report a strong and energetic voice came from the room. Come in, Zhang Yi opened the door and closed it casually. He saw a middle-aged man wearing a major general's uniform sitting behind his desk. He walked up to the desk and saluted the major general in front of him. Subordinate Zhang Yi reports to the chief. After speaking, place your order on your desk. Major general picked up the command and looked at it, put it down, picked up the phone on the table, and said. Let Captain Liang of the action team come here, he hung up the phone, ignoring Zhang Yi. He looked at the documents on the table and soon a report sounded. Major General said. Come in, a man in a black market mountain suit around 30 years old stood next to Zhang Yi and said. Do you have any instructions, webmaster? Zhang Yi said with a rare finger. Zhang Yi just got it, it's now under your management. Captain Liang immediately replied. Yes, webmaster. The station master nodded and said. You guys go back to work. 
After Zhang Yi and Captain Liang left the stationmaster's office, the Major General picked up the phone and said. Investigate the situation of newcomer Zhang Yi and submit the report to me tomorrow. Captain Liang took Zhang Yi to the office of the action team to get to know each other. He had someone take Zhang Yi to the logistics, armaments, finance, and personnel departments, where he received military uniforms, a Colt M1911 pistol, a box of bullets, and three magazines. He also processed documents and registrations in the personnel and finance departments. After finishing all this work, it was already noon. Chapter 4 Surveillance You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the afternoon, Captain Liang came to the office to inform everyone that going out was prohibited, and all those who were outside were also called back. When all the team members arrived, Captain Liang said to everyone, There is a surveillance task that we need to complete now. Hushi said, Captain, we are familiar with monitoring this job. Captain Liang said, this time, unlike before, the target family members need to be monitored 24-7. Chao Lusheng interrupted. Captain, who needs such a big battle? Captain Liang said displeased. Who is it? You'll know later. Whoever interrupts me again will be on the night shift tonight. The whole team spoke in unison. Yes, Captain Liang continued. The task was sent by the top and we need to complete it well. Goal Guo Qingguan, a trader merchant, helped the Japanese country purchase military supplies during the anti-Japanese war, while controlling the economy of Xinjiang and restraining huge assets. He paid $2 million to the nationalist government to buy his life, and he still has huge assets. Our goal is to find these assets. Guo Qingguan will be released from prison tomorrow morning, and his wife Feng Wei, son Guo Hanchang, daughter Dot in Dot Law Wu Pan Man, and grandson Guo Deming live in the old house. Our goal is to monitor these people, and we need to know where they have been and what they have touched. In short, I want to know everything about them, and who has any questions. Chao Lisheng asked. Don't you have an aunt? My aunt has already been dismissed and married. Xian Heng asked. Don't you have any other brothers and sons? Yes, according to his account, he is not in China. Zhang Yi asked. Are you sure the money is not in the bank? Sure, on the eve of the victory of the anti-Japanese war, he bought a safe under the name of San Yi Tai at a wealthy foreign company, but we haven't found it yet. Zhang Yi asked again. Can you find Aunt San? Aunt San is already dead. Captain Liang saw no one asking and said. Xian Hang and Zhang Yi are responsible for monitoring, while the remaining personnel are responsible for tracking and monitoring. Now, Xian Hang and Zhang Yi are working with the telecommunications department to install surveillance and eavesdropping devices, while others are setting up surveillance points and setting off. Zhang Yi and his team arrived at the villa area on Yongfu Road. Zhang Yi and Xian Hang went to the residential building opposite Guo Qingwen's villa to install monitoring equipment. Telecommunications personnel infiltrated Guo Qingwen's villa to install eavesdropping devices. When Xian Hang saw someone from the telecommunications department appearing on the balcony, he said to Zhang Yi. Test, Zhang Yi turned on the device, put on his headphones, and heard a sound coming from the headphones, saying to Xian Hang. The device is functioning properly and communication is good. Upon hearing Zhang Yi's answer, Xian Heng stood on the balcony waving his hand. The telecommunications personnel saw that Xian Heng had given a secret signal and knew there was no problem. They returned to the villa and began to retreat. Not long after, Captain Liang and the telecommunications personnel arrived at the surveillance point, and the telecommunications personnel began installing telephones. Captain Liang said. You must not slack off. If there is any situation, notify the brothers below and send the recording to the station every morning. Zhang Yi and Xian Heng quickly returned. Yes, after Captain Liang and the telecommunications personnel left, Zhang Yi and Xian Heng started chatting. 
After all, there is no one at Guo Qingwen's house now, chatting with Xi and Hang. Brother, isn't there anyone taking care of you up there? Zhang Yi's puzzled way. Brother Xi An, how do you say this? Xi An Hang saw that Zhang Yi was unaware and said. There are people above who won't be assigned to monitor. Zhang Yi handed Xi An Hang a cigarette and said. Brother Xi An, my younger brother just arrived and I don't know the situation. Can you tell me more? Xi An Hang took the cigarette and lit it, saying. No one in our team likes the job of monitoring, mainly because work is tiring and other personnel need to follow up when discovering situations. When it comes to rewarding others, those who monitor will receive the least credit. Zhang Yi now understands that listening is about finding useful information in a massive amount of information, handing it over to others, doing the hardest and most tiring work, and receiving the least amount of credit. For those who have a heart-to-heart, -heart, this is undoubtedly being marginalized. But there are also benefits, at least there is no need to work hard in the midst of gunfire and bullets, which is the best situation for Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi and Xi An Hang chatted until the sunset. Zhang Yi heard a lot about Shanghai Station in Xi An Hang, such as who was their student, fellow townspeople, and student relationships. At this moment, when he heard a knock on the door, Xi An Hang pulled out his gun from the holster and walked towards the door. Zhang Yi also took out his gun and pointed it at the door. Xi An Hang came to the door and said. Who, it came from outside the door. Xi An Hang, I'm here to bring you food. Xi An Hang recognized the voice of He Shi and put away his gun to open the door, allowing He Shi to come in. He Shi came in carrying two lunch boxes and said. Please work hard tonight. The lunch box will be collected tomorrow morning. Place the lunch box on the table and exit the room. Xi An Hang pouted and said to Zhang Yi. I saw them, they went home to sleep, but we had to listen here. Zhang Yi didn't answer Xi An Hang's words and opened his lunch box, saying to him. Brother Xi An, the food is good, as well as braised pork belly. Xi An Hang was surprised to hear that there was braised pork belly in brown sauce. Why is the food so good this time? Zhang Yi said. Perhaps Shangfeng knew we were working hard and gave us extra meals. Xi An Hang said. It's inexplicable. After finishing the meal, Xi An Hang said to Zhang Yi. You're in the first half of the night, I'm in the second half of the night, there's no problem, right? Zhang Yi said. No problem, I'll go home and sleep first and come to replace you at two o'clock. After speaking, he picked up his clothes and gun and walked out of the room. At seven o'clock, Guo Qingwen's family began to return home one after another. Zhang Yi turned on the monitoring device and started listening, while also recording. During the monitoring, Zhang Yi did not find any useful information. In the early morning, Xi and Hang came to change shifts with Zhang Yi. After handing over, Zhang Yi returned to his own home and saw that there was still food from his mother on the dining table. Zhang Yi simply ate some and went back to his room to sleep. When I woke up in the morning, only my little sister was at home, and my mother had already gone to work. Zhang Yi asked Zhang Ran. Xiao Ran, will we have dinner sooner or later? Xiao Ran said in confusion. Have you eaten yet? Touch your stomach with your hand and say again. I'm hungry now. Zhang Yi felt quite amused and said. Let's go, brother, take you to dinner. Xiao Ran said happily. I want to eat soup dumplings, okay, go have some soup dumplings. Zhang Yi finished speaking and walked out holding Xiao Ran's hand. Zhang Yi brought his sister to breakfast and ordered four baskets of soup dumplings. Zhang Yi ate most of them, and when he left, he packed three more baskets and took his sister home. Zhang Yi went to work. Zhang Yi arrived at the surveillance point and knocked on the door, saying. Brother Xian, I brought you a soup filling bag. The door opened from inside, Xian Hang said with a smile. Brother, you still think about brother. I'm really hungry. 
Zhang Yi handed the soup filling bag in his hand to Xian Hang and said. Was there any situation last night? Xian Hang said while eating. Not all of it is snoring. Can you help me organize the recording and I will send it back to the station later? Zhang Yi said something. Okay, when Zhang Yi finished organizing the recording, Xian Hang also finished it. Zhang Yi handed the cassette tape in his hand to Xian Hang and said. Brother Xian, I was busy all night last night. Go back early to rest. Xian Hang took the tape and said. I'm leaving. See you in the afternoon. Chapter 5 Military Statistics Reform You are listening at NovelFull.audio After Xian Hang left, Zhang Yi began today's work. At 10 o'clock in the morning, the voice of an elderly person came from Zhang Yi's earphones, and he began to concentrate on listening to every word they said. He did not find any useful information in their conversation. Time flies in the blink of an eye. On that day, Zhang Yi went to pick up Xian Hang's shift as usual and arrived at the surveillance point, where he saw Xian Hang fiddling with the machine absentmindedly. Zhang Yi said. Brother Xian, what's wrong? You have something on your mind. Xian Hang said with concern. Do you know, Zhang Yi? There's news that we're going to be adapted. I heard some news that there will be layoffs. Brother Xian, you have a wide network. Do you have any specific information? When Zhang Yi watched spy films in his previous life, he specifically checked the information of the Military Statistics Bureau. After the death of Boss Dai, the successor of the Military Statistics Bureau had a lower position in the central government of Jinling than Boss Dai. The Military Statistics Bureau was transferred to the second department of the Ministry of National Defense and renamed as the Confidentiality Bureau, and its power and status were comprehensively weakened. This is also the only opportunity for Zhang Yi to leave the Military Statistics Bureau. During the restructuring process, the Bureau extensively laid off employees. Xian Hang said anxiously. I heard we were transferred to the Ministry of National Defense. Zhang Yi said calmly. That's also good. Xian Hang's unwavering path. What's good about it? How many military personnel did we have before, and their relatives and classmates were able to spare us? We haven't even crossed the line yet, so we're starting to prepare for layoffs. Zhang Yi comforted the way. Brother Xian, you can rest assured that no matter how many layoffs you make, you won't be laid off. You have made contributions to the party and the country. Xian Hang didn't take on Zhang Yi's words, but said. Brother, I heard that your group of personnel is not on the list of layoffs. Zhang Yi was stunned when he heard Xian Hang's words, thinking to himself that this was my only chance to leave the Military Statistics Bureau. Why hasn't I been there yet? Oh my god, are you playing with me? Zhang Yi said. I would rather have me, I am most afraid of going to the battlefield. Xian Hang was not speaking, silently thinking about things. Zhang Yi handed the materials that Xian Hang needed to bring back, but when he saw that Xian Hang had not received them, he said. Come back to your senses, when you're tired, hurry home and go to bed. Xian Hang took the materials and said. Okay, then I'll go back first. Walking to the door, he turned around and wanted to speak to Zhang Yi, but in the end, he didn't say anything and opened the door and walked out. Zhang Yi sat in front of the monitor, monitoring the situation of Guo Qingwen's family. At this moment, the phone of Guo Qingwen's family rang, and a male voice spoke in English came from the phone. We have agreed to the terms you mentioned in bed. Please bring your things this afternoon. Guo Qingwen said happily. Okay. Everything is guaranteed to meet your satisfaction. See you in the afternoon. After speaking, hang up the phone. Zhang Yi picked up the phone next to him, dialed the number, and said. Guo Qingwen made an appointment with someone to trade in the afternoon, and the trading partner spoke English. The other party said. Good upon hearing the answer, Zhang Yi put down the phone and continued to monitor. 
It was the afternoon when Xian Hang came to change shifts. Xian Hang walked into the door and said. In the morning, Zhang Yi's leadership held a meeting and confirmed that we would be merged into the second department of the Ministry of National Defense and renamed as the Confidentiality Bureau. Zhang Yi asked. Are you still laying off employees? Xian Hang said. The list of layoffs has not been determined yet, and the officials are formulating standards. Zhang Yi said indifferently. I hope there will be results soon, I'll go back. Zhang Yi had not yet reached the door when the phone rang. Xian Heng picked up the phone and said. I am Xian Heng. At this moment, Xian Heng stopped Zhang Yi and whispered. I'm looking for you, Logistics Department Chief He Hongwei. Zhang Yi took the phone and said. Chief He, you're looking for me. He Hongwei said kindly. Xiao Zhang, do you have time this afternoon? Come to my office. Zhang Yi replied. Sir, if you have any instructions, just let me know. I will definitely do it well for you. He Hongwei said. It's not a big deal, I have a personal matter to ask for your help. Zhang Yi said. Okay sir, I'll go over now. Zhang Yi put down the phone and asked Xian Hang about it. Brother Xian, I don't know director he either. What can he get from me? Xian Hang paused slightly and said. I don't know what's going on, but Chief he has a wide network, so it's best not to offend him. Zhang Yi said. Thank you, Brother Xian. I'll leave first. Zhang Yi arrived at the station in Shanghai and walked towards Director He's office. Zhang Yi shouted at the office door. Report inside came the voice of He Hongwei. Come in. Zhang Yi opened the door and saw a colonel officer sitting behind his desk. Zhang Yi greeted the officer. Hello, sir, He Hongwei saw Zhang Yi and enthusiastically walked from behind his desk to Zhang Yi, holding his hand and saying. Xiao Zhang, are you tired from work? Come and sit down and have a cup of tea. He Hongwei's actions left Zhang Yi unsure of what to do, and he awkwardly sat on the sofa with Director He. He Hongwei brought two cups of tea and placed them on the coffee table, saying. Xiao Zhang, drink tea. Zhang Yi picked up his tea cup and took a sip, saying. Good tea. Zhang Yi's understanding of tea, whether in his past or present life, there is only one type of tea that Zhang Yi drinks, and that is ox drink. He Hongwei smiled and said. I like it. I also have a can when I leave. Zhang Yi quickly refused. The section chief is not rewarded for his meritorious service. Why don't you tell me what help you need from me? He Hongwei remained silent for a moment and said. Xiao Zhang, I'm too embarrassed to say that. I've been dedicated to the party and the country for twenty years, participating in more than ten battles of all sizes. After joining the Military Statistics Bureau, I was even more determined to die, but I have never regretted it. It's all for the party and the country. The only regret I have is getting married and having children when I was young. At this moment, He Hongwei paused slightly. Zhang Yi said. Chief, you are currently in your prime, so it's not a problem to get married and have children. He Hongwei whispered. To be honest with you, I am unable to conceive any more due to my descendant's injuries. At this moment, Zhang Yi was very puzzled in his heart. If you can't conceive and don't go see a doctor, why do you come to me? I don't know how to treat it. He Hongwei said again. A while ago, I went back to my hometown and adopted a child from my family. The child's father proposed a condition that he wanted to enter the military statistics bureau. At this point, Zhang Yi roughly understood why He Hongwei was looking for him. Zhang Yi said. Section Chief, isn't it easy for you to arrange for one person to enter the military statistics bureau? He Hongwei said. If it were in the past, there was no problem. Now the personnel authority of the Military Statistics Bureau has been transferred to the Ministry of National Defense. After the reform of the Military Statistics Bureau, 
the recruitment, training, and distribution of special agents were all under the authority of the Ministry of National Defense, and each station of the Military Statistics Bureau could not independently recruit personnel. Zhang Yi asked. What does the department head want me to do? He Hongwei saw that Zhang Yi was more upright and said. I won't let you do it for nothing. If you give up your job and name, I will give you some money for your future life. Zhang Yi said. It seems that I have no choice. Zhang Yi knew that if he didn't allow it, he might be silenced by someone in the next few days. By transferring a few people he had contact with and bribing his superiors, he could naturally replace himself. The reason why Zhang Yi is discussing with him now is that the cost of silencing himself is too high. He Hongwei said with a smile. How could that be? Can you agree or refuse? He Hongwei no longer has the attitude of expressing his shortcomings before. Zhang Yi extended three fingers and said. Give me this number, I agree. He Hongwei looked at Zhang Yi's outstretched finger and said with a relaxed expression. Okay, three big yellow croakers. Zhang Yi said. You misunderstood, it's thirty big yellow croakers. He Hongwei heard Zhang Yi's words and said in surprise. Thirty big yellow croakers, you're not afraid to survive. The expression of threat is unquestionable. Zhang Yi said calmly. It's better to survive than to starve in the future. With the money, I will leave Xincheng and never come back. He Hongwei just doesn't give money, and Zhang Yi will take this opportunity to leave the Military Statistics Bureau, but Zhang Yi doesn't want to give him a discount. He Hongwei said. No problem, I'll give you the money the day after tomorrow. He Hongwei is already thinking about killing and robbing Zhang Yi of money after getting his job done. Zhang Yi saw He Hongwei agree without hesitation and guessed that he was going to kill and rob money, saying. After receiving the money and ensuring the safety of my family, I will proceed with the procedures. He Hongwei said fiercely. Do you know the consequences of playing with me? Zhang Yi said. It's nothing but death, He Hongwei said. I will let you taste all the punishments in the military statistics while maintaining clarity. Zhang Yi said. Although I have no power or influence, I have classmates and teachers who won't watch me die for no reason. Without my cooperation, you won't get what you want. After speaking of longing, he walked away without looking at He Hongwei's angry face. Chapter 6 Plan to Escape You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Leaving Xinqing Station, Zhang Yi did not stop and walked straight towards home. When she returned home, her mother was cooking. She poked her head out of the kitchen and saw that it was Zhang Yi, saying. Wash your hands first, the food will be ready soon. After putting down his clothes, Zhang Yi said. Okay, mom, Xiaoran went there to play. After speaking, go wash your hands. Ji Xue said in the kitchen. At your aunt Xue's house downstairs. At this moment, Zhang Yi washed his hands and came out, saying. I'll go pick up Xiaoran. Zhang Yi opened the door and walked downstairs to Aunt Xue's house. He knocked on the door and heard a man's voice coming from inside. Who is it? This is the voice of Aunt Xue's husband, Lu Chuan. Lu Chuan is an editor of a newspaper, an authentic Shanghai native, and was a good friend of his father during his lifetime. After his father passed away, he took great care of their family. Zhang Yi smiled and said. Uncle Lu, I'm Zhang Yi, here to pick up Xiao Ran. Lu Chuan opened the door and asked enthusiastically. When did you come back? Come in. Zhang Yi saw Aunt Shui taking the dishes out of the kitchen and said. I came back a few days ago, so I won't go in, Uncle Lu. My mother cooked the meal and asked me to pick up Xiao Ran for dinner. Lu Chuan saw Zhang Yi not entering the door and said to the inside. Xiao Ran, your brother has come to pick you up. As soon as Lu Chuan finished speaking, he saw two little girls coming out of the room. Zhang Ran saw Zhang Yi running towards him and shouted loudly. Brother, brother, 
Jiayue and I will go to our house together. Lu Jiayue is the daughter of Lu Chuan, one year younger than Zhang Ran. Lu Jiayue also ran over and politely said hello. Hello brother, Zhang Yi smiled and said. Jiayue, let's go together. Lu Jiayue had just stepped out of her legs and walked towards Zhang Yi, when she was picked up by Lu Chuan from behind and said. You left, who will eat the food mom cooked? Lu Jiayue touched her face with her hands and said in a milky voice. Wait for me to come back and eat. Lu Chuan and Zhang Yi both laughed, and Lu Chuan touched Lu Jiayue with his forehead and said. You snack foodie. Zhang Yi said. Uncle Lu, let's go home first. Lu Chuan said. Xiaoya said goodbye to her brothers and sisters. Zhang Yi and Zhang Ran returned home, and Ji Xue had already prepared the dishes. Zhang Yi took Zhang Ran to wash his hands, finished washing his hands, and went to the dining table to eat. Zhang Yi ate silently. After finishing the meal, Zhang Yi went to wash the dishes, and his mother took Zhang Ran to wash up and let him play in his own room. Ji Xue sat down next to Zhang Yi and said. Xiaoyi, do you have something on your mind? Let's face it together when we encounter something. Zhang Yi saw Ji Xue inquiring and said. Mom, I haven't figured out how to tell you yet. Ji Xue said gently. We are a family, you can say anything you want. I'll help you with the staff. Zhang Yi told his mother in detail about today's conversation with Yi Hongwei, and Ji Xue said after listening. You handled it very well. After you resigned, we went back to our hometown in Beiping, and your grandparents missed you too. Zhang Yi doesn't want to go back to Beiping. He has experience working in the military statistics bureau and belongs to the enemy special forces after liberation. He doesn't want to endure hardship or involve his family, so he pondered for a moment and said. Mom, we're not going back to Beiping. Beiping is also within the jurisdiction of the Military Statistics Bureau. Let's go to Hong Kong Island. Ji Xue said. You are the only pillar of the family, we'll listen to you. I'll quit my job tomorrow. Zhang Yi said again. Mom, tomorrow you are buying two tickets for the night after tomorrow to go to Jin Men. Find Li Jianwu in Jin Men and he will arrange for you and Xiao Ran to go to Hong Kong Island. When they arrive, call me. If it is not safe, ask me when I will be there. Ji Xue followed Zhang Yi's arrangement and said again. What about your grandfather's side? Zhang Yi said. Their goal is money, they won't make it difficult for grandpa. When we stand firm on Hong Kong Island, we will pick them up. Ji Xue said. You can arrange it. Zhang Yi and Ji Xue discussed and Ji Xue returned to her room to rest. Zhang Yi picked up his clothes and gun to go to work. Monitoring points Zhang Yi knocked on the door, and Xian Hang opened it from inside. Zhang Yi entered the room and asked. Brother Xian, is there any situation today? Xian Hang said. No problem, Gu Chen Gwen sold a painting this afternoon and earned 3,000 silver yuan. Zhang Yi casually asked. Did their family have any antique calligraphy and paintings before? Xian Hang said. What's there? We've searched the house several times, and if there's anything, we've already taken it away. Zhang Yi said. Where did he draw from? Xian Hang suddenly said at this moment. The safe is at home. Zhang Yi said calmly. It could be at home or elsewhere. Xian Hang muttered to himself. If other surveillance personnel have not seen him bring the painting back from outside, it can prove that the safe is at home, and this situation needs to be reported. Xian Hang excitedly said. Zhang Yi, we have made contributions. After speaking, make a phone call and report your speculation to Captain Liang. Xian Hang put down the phone and said. The captain will verify with other accompanying personnel whether Guo Qingwen's family has brought back calligraphy and painting. The captain said that the intelligence is accurate, 
and our team is the top two. Xian Hang seemed very anxious and left after finishing speaking. Zhang Yi didn't rush to monitor, walked over to the phone, picked up the phone, and said. Jijinmen Station, after waiting for about three minutes, a voice came from the phone. This is Jin Men Station. Who are you looking for? Zhang Yi said. Hello, this is Xinqing Station, looking for Li Jianwu. The other party said. Wait a moment. Someone is looking for Li Jianwu, came from inside Li Jianwu picked up the phone and said. Who is looking for me? Zhang Yi said. Your father is looking for you, Li Jianwu said happily. Duck. You've been assigned to Xinqing Station. Zhang Yi seemed to see Li Jianwu's surprised expression and said. Yes, there's something I need your help with. Li Jianwu said humbly. I knew you wouldn't call me for no reason. Zhang Yi said. Can you help or not? Li Jianwu said. Help, what's our relationship? Zhang Yi said. Help me buy two tickets that can be left at any time. My mother will come to you in a few days to collect the tickets to Hong Kong Island. Please leave me an address. Li Jianwu said. Did you encounter any trouble? Zhang Yi said. It's hard to say, let's talk about it later. Li Jianwu said. We are brothers. If you don't want to say anything, just let it go. What needs you to say? Zhang Yi said. Thank you, brother. Hanging up the phone, Zhang Yi began today's surveillance work. Due to Xi and Hang's speculation, Zhang Yi occasionally walked to the window and observed the situation at Guo Qingwen's house through a telescope. During the early night surveillance, no special circumstances were found. Xi and Hang came to change shifts in the early morning. Xi and Hang walked in and said to Zhang Yi, Zhang Yi, I brought you a late night snack. As he spoke, he handed it to Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi took the late night snack delivered by Xian Hang and said. Brother Xian, thank you. She started eating supper next to her. Zhang Yi finished his midnight snack and went home to sleep after work. Zhang Yi continued to work as usual, while also paying attention to He Hongwei's movements. Through indirect investigation, he found out that He Hongwei was not at the station that day. Zhang Yi speculates that he may be raising money, after all, 30 large yellow croakers are not a small amount, and their purchasing power is equivalent to about 5 million yuan in modern times. Chapter 7 HSBC Bank You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the morning, Zhang Yi woke up, had breakfast, and walked towards the surveillance. Upon arriving at the surveillance point, Zhang Yi greeted Xi and Hang and began organizing the recording materials from the previous day. Zhang Yi then handed the materials to Xi and Hang. Xi and Hang took over the information and said. I'll go first. I'll bring you boiled dot sliced cold chicken at noon. Zhang Yi jokingly said. Is it your chicken? Xi and Hang retorted. Give me your chicken first and find someone to make it for you. Speaking, he pulled out Zhang Yi's crotch. Zhang Yi hid aside and said. Hurry up and go home. After Xi and Hang left, Zhang Yi began monitoring Guo Qingwen's home. Throughout the morning of monitoring, he did not receive any useful information. At noon, Xi and Hang brought lunch to Zhang Yi. While Zhang Yi was having lunch, the phone rang and Xi and Hang took it and said. I am Xi and Hang. Xian Hang said again. Yes, Xian Hang covered the microphone with his hand and said. I'm looking for you, Chief He. Zhang Yi put down his chopsticks and walked to the phone, taking the microphone and saying. Sir, I am Zhang Yi. He Hongwei said over the phone. See you at three o'clock at Daeong restaurant. Zhang Yi said. Yes, sir. Zhang Yi put down the phone and continued eating. Xian Hang said. You are very familiar with Director He, and I've been looking for you quite frequently these past few days. Zhang Yi pouted and said. 
I'm not familiar, I didn't have any prior friendship. Xian Hang said. Why does he keep looking for you? Zhang Yi said. He wants to buy my job position. Xian Hang quickly said. Did you agree? Zhang Yi said. I haven't agreed yet. I asked him for 30 big yellow croakers. Xian Hang exclaimed in surprise. Can he agree? There are 30 big yellow croakers, and I agree too. Zhang Yi finished eating and said. He arranged to meet me at 3 p.m. at the Daeong Hotel and should agree. I'll leave first, Brother Xian. Xian Hang said. Okay, pay attention to safety. Upon hearing Xian Hang's words, Zhang Yi knew that Xian Hang meant to be careful of He Hongwei's deceit. Zhang Yi said. I will pay attention, thank you. After speaking, Zhang Yi walked out of the surveillance point and called for a yellow charter car at the door. Say to the coachman. Daeong Hotel, the coachman returned. Boss, please leave. Zhang Yi sat on the yellow charter bus, pondering whether there were any loopholes in his mother's plan to go to Hong Kong Island. The only loophole in the entire plan was whether He Hongwei would send someone to track his mother and them throughout the journey. Zhang Yi needed to seek help from Li Jianwu to get rid of the tail. The rickshaw came to Daeong Hotel. After Zhang Yi paid the rickshaw driver's bill, he looked at the Daeong Hotel in front of him. Daeong Hotel was established in the late Qing dynasty and has a history of more than 30 years. It is famous in the hotel circle of Shincheng. It focuses on Zhejiang cuisine, including West Lake fish in vinegar sauce and fried shrimps with Longjing tea, which are their specialty dishes and are popular. Zhang Yi walked into the restaurant and the waiter approached with a smile and asked. Good afternoon, sir. How many of you are there? Zhang Yi said. I have made an appointment with someone. He Hongwei is in that private room. In the old China era, when booking a private room in a restaurant, the front desk manager would be informed of the guest's name to avoid unnecessary trouble. The waiter smiled and said. Sir He, in the Lotus Hall, please go upstairs. Under the guidance of the waiter, Zhang Yi arrived at He Hongwei's private room and walked into it, where He Hongwei and a young man he knew sat. The young man sat silently beside He Hongwei. Zhang Yi walked into the room and felt a chill all over his body. However, Zhang Yi knew that it was definitely not due to the temperature, as if it was a reaction of his body being stimulated. Suddenly, Zhang Yi became nervous, suspecting whether He Hongwei was going to be detrimental to himself. He Hongwei saw Zhang Yi come in and also noticed his nervousness, saying with a smile. Xiao Zhang, come in quickly. Zhang Yi quickly calmed down his tense mood and said with a smile. Chief He, your efficiency is really high. You raised all the money in one day. He Hongwei saw Zhang Yi adjust his mentality instantly, and couldn't help but praise his good psychological quality. He said calmly on his face. It's all friends help. The implication is to tell Zhang Yi that I have a wide range of friends and can handle some things. He Hongwei smiled and said. Let me introduce you to a friend, Kai Hao, from the criminal investigation department. His specialty is skinning, even well.trained Japanese people. You should be cautious in front of him, and you should have more contact in the future. Kai Hao and Zhang Yi stood up and shook hands with each other. At the moment of shaking hands, Zhang Yi fell into the ice cellar, cold and piercing. Zhang Yi quickly withdrew his hand and said. Long heard of a great name. He Hongwei saw Zhang Yi's ugliness and achieved his goal of deterring him, saying. Waiter, serve the dishes. After the waiter left, He Hongwei lifted the suitcase at his feet onto the table and opened it, saying. I have brought the money, don't play tricks on me. Zhang Yi saw the gold inside the box, closed it and placed it next to him, saying. My family is safe now, I will cooperate with you. Zhang Yi took a sip of tea and said again. I won't eat the meal, I'll leave first. He Hongwei said. Remember what you said. 
Zhang Yi walked out of the restaurant carrying a box and called for a yellow van, saying. Go to HSBC Bank, Zhang Yi wants to exchange gold for dollars and then let his mother take it away. After Zhang Yi left, Kai Hao said to He Hongwei. Let him go like this, He Hongwei said. He called Jin Men Station and the school the day before yesterday and yesterday, although he didn't know the content, he could still guess a rough idea. Kai Hao asked. Does anyone greet you now? He Hongwei said. No one has come to see me yet, because it should be because my position is not high. Kai Hao said. Find someone to do him. He Hongwei said. I have arranged for someone to save his life. Kai Hao remained silent, while He Hongwei continued. Eat vegetables, eat vegetables. HSBC Bank Zhang Yi stood at the entrance of HSBC Bank, looking at the Ah San Patrol on both sides of the gate. Zhang Yi walked to the hall, where there were many guests, including Chinese and foreign people. The entire hall was decorated very luxurious, with marble floors and numerous brass decorations. The dome was painted with exquisite murals, and the whole hall was magnificent. Zhang Yi came to the window and said with a smile, Exchange for US dollars. The staff inside said, Sir, are you using gold, silver dollars, or fiat currency? Zhang Yi placed the suitcase on the counter and said, Gold, the staff used their hands to pull the suitcase, but did not pull it, and said, How much gold is this? Zhang Yi said, Thirty large yellow croakers, the staff said happily. Please wait a moment. Due to the huge amount, I am unable to make the decision. I will call the manager for you. While waiting, Zhang Yi saw the staff bring in a beautiful foreigner, who spoke fluently in Shenqing dialect. Hello sir, my name is Lawrence Heidi. You can call me Heidi and we will go to the VIP room to talk. Heidi led the way ahead, while Zhang Yi walked towards the VIP room carrying a suitcase. Zhang Yi arrived at the VIP room and opened the suitcase, gesturing for Heidi to come forward and inspect. The staff took out a balance from the cabinet and placed it on the table. At this moment, the door was opened and the waiter came in with coffee and desserts. Heidi smiled and said. Sir, you have coffee. Zhang Yi gestured to Heidi not to care about him. Zhang Yi was drinking coffee here and Heidi also completed the inspection and weighing of the gold, saying to Zhang Yi. Sir, your batch of gold has a total of 331 ounces, and the price of gold is $35 per ounce, totaling $11,585. In July 1944, the United Nations and Allied countries held the International Monetary and Financial Conference in Bretton Woods, USA, which established a monetary system where the U.S. dollar was pegged to gold and other countries' currencies were pegged to the U.S. dollar. The Federal Reserve promised one ounce of gold to be $35. Zhang Yi said. Sure, please help me open an account and deposit $10,000, and give me the remaining cash. Chapter 8 Killing Traders You are listening at NovelFull.audio when Zhang Yi finished his coffee and desserts, the staff came in and handed him the deposit receipt and cash. After Zhang Yi left HSBC, he rushed home. When he arrived home, both his mother and younger sister were at home, Zhang Yi said to Ji Xue. Mom, have you packed your luggage? Ji Xue said. Pack up now, what about your side? Zhang Yi took out the deposit certificate and cash and handed them to his mother saying. Mom, I sold the gold. Here is the deposit receipt from HSBC Bank, which contains $10,000. You can take the cash as an allowance. Mother took it over and asked. How to deal with the house? Zhang Yi said. Take away the property deed and sell it if there is a chance in the future. Let's go to the dock now, Zhang Yi was carrying his luggage, while Ji Xue and Zhang Ran went downstairs together. Recruit two yellow chartered cars downstairs. Zhang Yi in his luggage, Ji Xue and Zhang Ran, drove towards Huangpu port. Arriving at the dock, 
Zhang Yi escorted his family onto the ship and watched as the ship sailed towards the sea. Zhang Yi waved goodbye to his mother on the shore. After losing sight of the ship, Zhang Yi's face darkened. He took out his gun and turned to walk towards the middle dot aged man 50 meters behind him. When the middle dot aged man discovered that Zhang Yi was missing again, he did not go forward to check, but instead searched around in place. He did not see Zhang Yi's figure, so the middle dot aged man turned around and ran towards the door. Zhang Yi stopped him at the container. Zhang Yi pointed a gun at the middle dot aged man's head and said, Who are you? Why are you following me? The middle dot aged man said, Don't be nervous, be careful of getting into trouble. My name is Gung Jixing and I didn't follow you. Zhang Yi smiled and said, From HSBC Bank to my house, and then to the dock. And then being pointed at by a gun, you can still talk to me without changing your face. Who called you here? Zhang Yi began searching for Gung Jixing's body. He found a pistol, cigarette, match, and two silver coins, but could not find any identification documents. Zhang Yi waved his pistol in front of Gung Jixing and said, Is this something that ordinary people can have? Gung Jixing remained silent, and Zhang Yi turned his gun towards Gung Jixing's thigh and said, Hard-lipped, right. With a loud bang, Zhang Yi fired a shot at Gung Jixing's thigh, then turned the muzzle towards the middle of his thigh and said, If we don't talk about it, if we don't talk about the descendants' bags, we'll lose them. Gung Jixing said in a panic. I am from Director He's department. Zhang Yi said. Why are you following me? Gung Jixing endured the pain and said. Chief He, I'm afraid you might run away. Zhang Yi continued to ask. Who else is there? Gung Jixing said. Dai Yongfu, Zhang Yi asked. Where is he? Gung Jixing replied. He went to the ticket office. Zhang Yi heard from Gung Jixing that he had gone to the ticket office to check the flight of the ship. Zhang Yi withdrew all the bullets from Gung Jixing's pistol and threw it aside, saying. Go back and tell He Hongwei that I will not go back on my promise. Zhang Yi held his gun and retreated to the surveillance point to switch shifts with Xian Hang. After Xian Hang left, Zhang Yi picked up the phone and said. Jijinmen Station, after the phone was connected, Zhang Yi said. I'm looking for Li Jianwu. The other party said. Wait a moment, Li Jianwu, someone is looking for me, came over the phone Li Jianwu came to answer the phone and said. I'm Li Jianwu, who are you? Zhang Yi said. I, my mother, and Xiao Ran have already boarded the ship. I suspect someone is following them. If there is, you can handle it for him. Li Jianwu said. Don't worry, I will handle it thoroughly. Three days later. Li Jianwu called and said. Auntie and little sister have already escorted them onto the ship, and two people are tracking them. They have already taken care of it. Zhang Yi said. Good brother, thank you. After learning about the initial safety of his family, Zhang Yi's heart had already let go halfway and he began to consider the next steps. Zhang Yi knew that in the future, a large amount of money would be needed to provide a comfortable environment for his family. Through surveillance of the trader Guo Qingwen, it was preliminarily determined that Guo Qingwen's hidden property was located in the villa. Zhang Yi took a risk and attempted to rob him. The next morning, Zhang Yi did not go home after work and went to the rooftop of the surveillance point to continue monitoring Guo Qingwen's home. At around 5 a.m., the darkest moment before dawn, when everyone was unprepared, Zhang Yi decided to take action. Quietly descending from the rooftop, stopping in front of the surveillance point door, listening to the snoring coming from inside, confirming that Xian Hang had fallen asleep, he gently descended the stairs and walked towards Guo Qingwen's house. Zhang Yi came to the back of Guo Qingwen's house, avoiding the surveillance points and the view of the action team. He started a run-up at a distance of six meters from the wall. At the moment of stepping on the wall, he exerted force from his waist and turned over to enter Guo Qingwen's family courtyard. After landing, 
Zhang Yi checked the surroundings in the villa, and saw a peaceful scene. Taking out his gun, covering his face, he quietly entered the villa. As Zhang Yi opened the door, a three-dot dimensional model of the villa instantly appeared in his mind. The 3D model shows Guo Qingwen's family, all located in three bedrooms on the second floor. Zhang Yi shook his head and entered the villa. He searched one by one on the first floor, but did not find anyone. Arriving at the second floor, Zhang Yi checked each bedroom one by one. In the 3D model, the child's bedroom was displayed, and Guo Deming, the grandson of Guo Qingwen, was found. He took out a pre-prepared rope from the storage ring and, without waking Guo Deming up, tied it to the bed in large letters. Zhang Yi successively tied up Guo Hanchang, the son of Guo Qingwen, and his daughter Dot in Dot Law Wu Pan Man, and came to Guo Qingwen's room. Zhang Yi didn't tie them up this time and patted the faces of Guo Qingwen and Feng Wei with a gun, saying, Wake up, wake up. Guo Qingwen woke up first, looked at the muzzle in front of him, and said, Hero, seeking wealth or revenge. Everything is easy to discuss. This is Guo Qingwen's wife who also woke up and saw an extra person inside the room, just about to call out. Zhang Yi aimed his gun at him and immediately swallowed his voice, leaning against Guo Qingwen and shouting softly. Master, Master. Zhang Yi raised his gun and said. I rely on mountain tigers for wealth, but I don't mind risking my life. Zhang Yi casually gave himself a nickname. Guo Qingwen comforted his wife while saying. Hero, I still have two gold bars here. You can take them and use them first. Zhang Yi looked at him and said. Where are you going to send the beggar? I know your background, take me to your safe. Guo Qingwen quickly said. Okay, I'll take you there. Guo Qingwen and his wife went to the study, took down the mural, and exposed the safe behind them. Guo Qingwen opened the safe and handed out all the contents on the desk, including two gold bars and one thousand pounds. Guo Qingwen said. Hero, my family's assets are all here. Can you spare us? Zhang Yi said with a grim smile. You don't shed tears until you see the coffin. What I want is a safe bought in the name of Aunt San. Guo Qingwen heard Zhang Yi's words and a hint of unease flashed in his eyes, then quickly retorted. We only have this safe at home, there's nothing else. Chapter 9 Huge Property you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Zhang Yi picked up the pillow from the sofa and pointed the gun at Guo Qingwen's wife, saying, Didn't you hear me clearly? I'll count three, and if you don't say it, I'll shoot. Three, Guo Qingwen remained silent. Two, one, Zhang Yi wrapped his pillow around the muzzle of the gun with a pop sound. Guo Qingwen's wife, with a blood flower on her chest, slowly collapsed. Guo Qingwen trembled and said. You must die hard. Zhang Yi suppressed the urge to vomit and said. You should worry about yourself first. If you don't say it, I'll kill one person every three counts. Three, two, Guo Qingwen said. What I do on my own, I take responsibility for it, it has nothing to do with them. One, Zhang Yi pointed a gun at Guo Qingwen and went to his son's room, where he shot his daughter dot in dot law in the chest. At this moment, his son also woke up and said loudly. What kind of person are you? Zhang Yi said softly. Quiet, if you want to survive, please your dad. Guo Hanchang asked in a panic. Dad, what's the situation? Guo Qingwen remained silent and did not answer. 3, 2, 1, Zhang Yi pointed his gun at Guo Hanchang and looked at Guo Qingwen, saying. I truly have followed Japanese people, my heart is really ruthless. At the moment when Zhang Yi fired his gun, Guo Qingwen rushed towards Zhang Yi and punched him with both hands. Zhang Yi kicked Guo Qingwen in the stomach and kicked him to the ground. Guo Qingwen kept panting on the ground, after all, he was already in his fifties. Due to Guo Qingwen's interference, the bullet did not hit Guo Hanchang, and Zhang Yi fired another shot at Guo Hanchang's chest. 
Zhang Yi came to Guo Qingwen's side and said. Now it's only you and your grandson left, do you want to say it or not? Watching my family die one by one in front of me, but I am powerless, now I have to face a choice. Guo Qingwen cried bitterly. You killed me and let my grandson go. Zhang Yi stood up and said. It seems that in your heart, money is more important than family. After speaking, walk towards the next bedroom. Zhang Yi hasn't left the door yet, said Guo Qingwen. I'll take you there. Zhang Yi smiled and said. Why do you have to die so many people? Guo Qingwen took Zhang Yi to the underground wine cabinet, took a bottle of wine from above and placed it next to him. He forcefully pushed the cabinet and it slowly moved backwards. Guo Qingwen and Zhang Yi walked backwards and inwards for about 10 meters before reaching the door. Guo Qingwen said. That's it inside. Zhang Yi pointed a gun at Guo Qingwen and said. Don't play tricks, open him up. Guo Qingwen slowly opened the door, which was a 10 square meter room with only one safe inside. Zhang Yi was also very excited when he saw the safe, which was the safe that the Military Statistics Bureau was looking for. Zhang Yi said to Guo Qingwen. Open him. Guo Qingwen went to open the safe, and Zhang Yi said at this moment. Drive slowly, don't play tricks. The movies he watched in his past life told him that the closer he gets to success, the greater the danger. Guo Qingwen is also an old fox. Listening to Zhang Yi's words, he slowly opened the safe. At the moment of opening the door, he took out a pistol from the safe and crazily opened fire on Zhang Yi, saying. Make a little red guy, go to hell. The first bullet hit Zhang Yi's arm, causing excruciating pain. Zhang Yi grinned in pain as he hit at the corner, with bullet holes punched through the solid wooden door in front of him. Zhang Yi picked up the gun with his left hand and waited for the opportunity to counterattack. Guo Qingwen didn't expect that Zhang Yi would react so quickly. He had run out of bullets from a magazine and didn't kill him. Taking out a magazine from the safe and replacing it, he walked towards Zhang Yi and said crazily. Aren't you asking for money? Come out, all the money is here, with gold bars and dollars. Come out, kill me, it's all yours. Zhang Yi saw Guo Qingwen walking to the wooden door and kicked it, knocking him down. While being knocked down by the wooden door, Zhang Yi fired at Guo Qingwen through the wooden door. Bang, bang. Shoot all the bullets in the gun. Through the bullet hole on the wooden door, it can be seen that Guo Qingwen has been shot and fallen to the ground. Zhang Yi changed the magazine and walked over to Guo Qingwen, saying. Die so hard, it's a cheap deal for you. Zhang Yi put Guo Qingwen's pistol into the storage ring and went to the safe. There were no fiat coins inside, only gold bars and US dollars, which could be around 1 million US dollars. He put all of this money into the storage ring. Stepping out of the basement, Zhang Yi opened the back door of Guo Qingwen's house and walked towards it. Returning home, Zhang Yi found alcohol, bandages, and hemostatic drugs and began to treat the wound. The bullet did not stay inside and directly penetrated the muscle. After treating the wound, it was already dawn. Zhang Yi washed his face and changed into clothes before going to work. Arriving at the surveillance point, Zhang Yi handed breakfast to Xian Hang and said. Brother Xian, I have brought you a pan fry. Xian Hang took breakfast and said. Brother still thinks about brother. Zhang Yi asked while organizing the recording tape. Was there any situation last night? Xian Hang was eating the pan fry, muttering vaguely. What situation can there be? Xian Hang finished breakfast and went back. Zhang Yi was driving his monitoring device and planning his escape route. At noon, people who saw the Military Statistics Bureau began to enter Guo Qingwen's home one after another, even the webmaster came. Not long after, Xian Hang arrived at the surveillance point and said. A big deal happened, and Guo Qingwen's family was silenced and his money was stolen. Zhang Yi pretended to be surprised and said. 
who dares to do this? Isn't it like pulling teeth from a tiger's mouth? Xian Hang said dejectedly. I don't know, we're checking. The webmaster called us over. Zhang Yi and Xian Hang arrived at Guo Qingwen's villa and walked up to the station master, saying in unison. Xian Hang and Zhang Yi report to the chief. The webmaster looked at them and asked. Which of you is responsible for the latter half of the night? Xian Hang said. Report sir, I will be responsible for the second half of the night. The webmaster said calmly. Did you find any abnormalities? Xian Hang said. No abnormal personnel found, Xian Hang dare not say anything else. He knows that one lie requires ten lies to be told, and at the same time, he dare not let the webmaster know that he is sleeping at night and neglecting his duty. Upon hearing Xian Hang's answer, the stationmaster became furious and cursed. Waste, a group of waste, let people kill people right under their noses. All the people present lowered their heads and remained silent. After the webmaster got angry, he said. This case is handed over to the fourth team, and you all go back to headquarters. Captain Leon respectfully replied. Yes, after the arrival of the fourth action team, led by Captain Leong, Zhang Yi and his team all returned to the military statistics station. Returning to the office, Captain Leong comforted everyone. Everyone has been busy for over half a month, so take a good rest these days. Although Zhang Yi is very tired, he has been playing cards with everyone at the headquarters to avoid being noticed. Due to their lack of tasks at the moment, they have arranged to stay at headquarters for night shifts. Chapter 10 Escape You are listening at NovelFull.audio Seven days later, in the evening. Zhang Yi was studying books in the storage ring at home when a voice came from downstairs. Zhang Yi, known mama called. Zhang Yi came to the window and said. Okay, come down immediately. After speaking, Zhang Yi quickly ran downstairs to the CAFA and answered the phone. Mom, I'm Xiaoyi. Ji Xue's voice came from the phone. Xiaoyi, your sister and I arrived this afternoon. We are staying at the Wenhua Hotel and waiting for you here. Zhang Yi didn't hear the secret code agreed upon with his mother during the conversation, and knew that his mother and sister were safe, Zhang Yi said. Mom, after I finish dealing with things here, I'll go over and meet you as soon as possible. After hanging up the phone, Zhang Yi went home to sleep. The next day at the military statistics station, Zhang Yi approached He Hongwei and said. Director He, we can proceed with the procedures now. He Hongwei said. Your family is safe now. Zhang Yi smiled and said. Thank you, Chief He, for your full escort. He Hongwei pretended to be fooled and said. Escort, what kind of escort? Zhang Yi didn't expose him and asked. When will we go through the formalities? He Hongwei said. I'll give the HR department a call. A few minutes later, He Hongwei said to Zhang Yi. One hour later, we will meet at the personnel department. Zhang Yi returned to the office of the action team, where most of the members were present. Some were chatting, while others were reading newspapers. Xian Hang saw Zhang Yi and waved to him. Come and smoke a cigarette. Zhang Yi took the cigarette handed over by Xian Hang and said. Brother Xian, so idle. Xian Hang said. What can happen now? After smoking, Xian Hang said. Let's go play cards. Zhang Yi said helplessly. I played all afternoon yesterday and still play today. Does the leader care? Xian Hang said. Our job is like this, we have no time or night when we're busy, and nothing to do when we're free. Just get used to it. Zhang Yi and Xian Hang returned to the office and organized a game of cards. An hour passed without realizing it, and the phone in the office rang. Zhang Yi put down his card and answered the phone, saying. Action team, which one is yours? The voice of He Hongwei came from the phone. I'm He Hongwei. 
Now let's go to the personnel department. Zhang Yi said. Coming soon, Chief He. After hanging up the phone, Zhang Yi said to everyone. You guys play, I'll go to the HR department. Everyone complained one after another that this card was about to win. Zhang Yi laughed and cursed. A bunch of bastards, if you all win, I'll lose. When Zhang Yi arrived at the personnel office, he Hongwei was already there, with a well-dressed young man beside him. He Hongwei saw Zhang Yi walk over and say. Let's go take photos first. Zhang Yi replied. Okay, listen to you. They arrived at the photo studio, took a work photo of the young man first, and then went to the identification room. Zhang Yi handed his work permit to the staff, and He Hongwei handed the young man's photo to the staff, saying. Oldly, I changed the photo. Lao Li didn't receive the photo handed over by He Hongwei and said. Chief He, this does not comply with the rules. He Hongwei said. Lao Li, the webmaster agreed. Lao Li took the photo and said. I'll call the webmaster first. After finishing the phone call, Lao Li came back and replaced the photo, while also affixing a new seal. Coming out of the identification room and into the archives, the staff was very cooperative this time. After finishing everything, Zhang Yi returned to the action team to bid farewell to everyone. The other personnel did not have any sadness, only Xian Hang showed a regretful expression. Zhang Yi walked out of the gate of the Military Statistics Bureau and headed home. At the same time, He Hongwei looked at Zhang Yi's distant back through the office window, returned to his desk, picked up the phone, and said. You can take action now. It came over the phone. No, He Hongwei hung up the phone and muttered to himself. Don't blame me, just blame you for being too greedy. Thirty gold bars choked you to death. Zhang Yi finished lunch outside and walked downstairs to his residence. When he was about to go upstairs, he saw Aunt Shui coming down. Zhang Yi said. Aunt Shui, go out. Aunt Shui smiled and said. Go and ask the child to come home for dinner. Xiaoyi, your family has guests. Zhang Yi asked in surprise. When did you come? Aunt Shui recalled for a moment and said. About half an hour ago, I was waiting for you at your house. Hurry up and go home. I finished speaking and left. Zhang Yi did not continue upstairs, turned around and walked outward. There is no one at home, even if guests come, it is impossible to enter the house. Arriving at the building directly opposite his home, Zhang Yi found a location where he could observe the house. He saw two men in Zhongshan suits sitting on chairs. Zhang Yi originally planned to go home and pack his clothes before going to the dock. But seeing the situation at home, I knew I was being targeted. Zhang Yi walked downstairs towards the train station. He gave up the waterway and prepared to take the train to Yangcheng, and then take the boat to Hong Kong Island. Arriving at the train station, Zhang Yi couldn't find a direct train to Yangcheng. He looked at the National Railway map at the ticket office and could transfer at Nanchang. Zhang Yi bought a ticket and waited in the waiting hall for the train. After the train started, he saw He Hongwei and his people coming to the platform to start checking. Ten days later, Zhang Yi came out of Yangqing Railway Station. What he most wants to do now is not to find a boat to go to Hong Kong Island, but to find a place to take a shower. I haven't taken a shower or changed clothes for ten days, and now I feel uncomfortable all over, emitting a pungent smell. Zhang Yi found a bathhouse and instructed his staff to buy clothes for him. He quickly walked into the pool and when he came out, the clothes had already been bought. After changing his clothes, Zhang Yi walked out of the bathhouse and found a place to eat. I rented a boat at the pier and sailed towards Hong Kong Island. After a three-dot-hour voyage, I arrived at the Tsim Sha Sui Pier on Hong Kong Island. After getting off the ship, Zhang Yi inquired about the location of the Wenhua Hotel, which many people did not know. Finally, he returned to the dock and asked the people working at the dock that the Wenhua Hotel was near Central. 
Zhang Yi took a ferry across the sea and found the Mandarin Hotel near Wan Chai Plaza. Looking at this six-dot-story tall building, Zhang Yi went to the hotel front desk and asked the waiter. Hello, may I ask which room Ji Xue lives in? The waiter smiled and said. Sorry sir, we cannot disclose customer information. Zhang Yi said. Give her a call and say that the person she's waiting for has arrived. The waiter said. Okay sir, you can rest next to me now. Zhang Yi walked towards the coffee shop pointed out by the waiter. Zhang Yi had not finished a cup of coffee when his mother walked towards him with her little sister. Zhang Ran saw Zhang Yi shake off his mother and run towards him, shouting loudly. Brother, brother. Run to Zhang Yi, hug his thigh, and say. I miss you so much. Zhang Yi joked. Where do you miss me? Xiao Ran pointed to her head with her fingers. Here, Ji Xue also approached and said. Don't bother your brother, sit still. After training Zhang Ran, he said again. Where's your luggage? Zhang Yi said. There was a small accident and I didn't bring any luggage. Ji Xue is carrying way. You're not injured, are you?